everyone, could you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good morning. I'd like to remind everyone to silence their cell phones. Um, the meeting documents are available for review down at the end next to Commissioner Karski. And Craig or Carol are here this morning and could help you if you need a listening device. Uh, Commissioner Heiberger is home ill, so our thoughts are with her this morning. We wish her a speedy recovery. That takes us to our first item. Um, consider a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, the next item, item two, is to approve the commission minutes from February 6, 2018. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next item are bills to be paid in the amount of $4,207,385.69. Pay the bills. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Today's bills include uh, $2.8 million for, of motor vehicle fees we remitted to the state, uh, a, a net of 200000 for Armour Correctional Health for the jail health, and $510,000 for PESCA construction on the jail project. And we also had uh, $6,920 for birth fees and $7,520 twenty dollars in death fees so apparently death is costing us more than birth at this point I think you said that the um, the fees to PESCA for, were for the jail and I believe they're for the museum mm -hmm. oh that's what I meant though. no I knew you did so. I, it was that way in my head I'm sorry it's okay uh, any connected. other any other items any other discussion if not I'd entertain a motion to approve the bills so moved second motion and a second all in favor aye, aye. Motion passes unanimously, thank you. Uh, the re there are reports there for everyone's review. There's an annual report for the Minnehaha County um, Auditor's Account with the, with the County Treasurer as of February 28th, and the Minnehaha County Coroner Report for January of 2018. Those are all available for everyone's review. Takes us to item five, personnel actions. I consider a motion to approve the routine personnel actions. So move. Second. And a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to item six, abatements recommended for approval. Olivia Larson. Yes. So for A through E, they are all tax exempt status. We have the City of Sioux Falls RDID 28629 2017 property taxes in the amount of $164.38. City of Sioux Falls RDID 37583 2017 property taxes in the amount of $107.29. City of Sioux Falls RDID 37584 2017 property taxes in the amount of $180.64. Uh, South Dakota Department of Transportation RDID 44201 2017 property taxes in the amount of $818.84 and South Dakota Department of Transportation, the RDID 44202, 2017 property taxes in the amount of $1,552.24. Are there any questions for Olivia in that group? I'd rec uh, make a motion to approve A through E. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That takes us to the next group. Olivia? Yes. F through K are all for the assessment freeze, as well as 2017 property taxes. So we have RDID 51850 in the amount of $292.82, RDID 59354 in the amount of $457.19, <coughs> RDID 39381 in the amount of $942.36, RDID 38395 in the amount of $253.44, RDID 36235 in the amount of $267, and RDID 36198 in the amount of $272.49. Is there any questions for Olivia on that group? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And that takes us to the next group. Yes. So we have L and M, both for Greg Van Regen Mortar. Uh, due to a house fire for 2017 and 2016 property taxes. 
They are both RDID 10615. The 2016 is in the amount of $368.35, and the 2017 is in the amount of $725.01. Any questions? Move approval. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion passes unanimously. And then we have um, abatements recommended for denial. The first one is Shar Roth, RDID 86828, 2017 property taxes in the amount of $2,335.49. And Monica Honkamp is here if you have questions. Are there any questions for Monica? Commissioner Benninger. Uh, the first one uh, for Shar Roth, when people file uh, building permits, on our application form, does it show the difference between an owner-occupied construction project and one that is not? I don't know on the building permit if that does or not. So how will they know, other than the tax notice that they get, that well, they need the to file? Well, usually the contractor is one that should know and should inform them. Um, in this case, I, I do know that they had applied in another county, so they were aware of the owner-occupied. We just didn't get an application. I'd be curious on how many contractors actually know the difference. <laughs> in fact, if you're not close to government, right. I don't think very many people know there is a definition between the two. Right. Commissioner Barth? How many counties can you have a, a homeowner's uh, status in? You can only have one home. So if they applied in Turner County, uh, how could they possibly think they would have it here? They had moved. They moved to Sioux Falls and built a house. Did they give up their yes. tax exemption? Right. Any other questions? I personally don't think it's always just the homeowner that is responsible through a contractor in this process. And uh, um, I'm going to make a motion that we approve their property tax uh, abatement to back to the uh, homeowner amount. Is there a second? Just which one? On just the uh, and at this point, 86828. I'll second it, but I would like to make a comment. Sure. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Commissioner Karski. My wife's been a closing agent for title companies in town, and, you know, I, I, I know part of the conversation when you do a closing on a loan repeatedly is make sure you go and take care of this at the county you have to go in down and sign up on this at least I know that's part of her conversation with every loan closing she does um, to be unaware especially when you're buying a house and a 25 percent uh, reduction on your t taxes abatement on the taxes I mean that's it, it's a large number 2300 bucks just for the one year I, I think most people are fully aware of it and do you forget or what what was the I'm uncertain of this person's reason for not doing it. If they said they were not aware. They were not aware. Right. Okay. Madam Chair. Commissioner Barth. In as much as they were aware at their previous residence, it's hard to believe they were unaware at this residence. Is there any comments from the applicant? Uh, is the applicant here? Are there any comments from the applicant? I don't believe so. I appreciate uh, Commissioner Karski's comments about the loan closing. Um, I have only once or twice in my life and lived in the same house for 40 years and I can't remember what happened yesterday. So um, I guess I have a concern about the fact that there is a obviously uh, a previous transaction but that was a number of years ago and if in fact that's standard practice for everybody that does loan closings I'm not sure anybody else any other comments 
So we have a motion and a second to um, grant the abatement. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do a roll call vote? Sure. Okay. Barr? No. Bender? Yes. Benega? Yes. Karski? No. Okay, we get to defer that to next week then. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That takes us Can to. We, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to eat her up, but I'm going to be gone uh, next week. In fact, I'm gone for the next two weeks. Okay. Uh, can we wait or not that long? I, I, th I think that's reasonable. Uh, Ms. Madam so Chair, should we make a, a motion to defer for three weeks then, Gerald? Is I that think that would be appropriate just okay. because we've got a tie vote now. That makes sense. Is there a motion? Okay, I would make a motion to defer action on this for three weeks. Second. So we have a motion and a second to defer for three weeks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, that takes us to the last abatement. Yes, this is for Charles Gertis, RDID 86746, <coughs> 2017 property taxes in the amount of $1,090.28 recommended for denial. Are there uh, <coughs> comments? My only question on this one, if I may, uh, is are those notices sent out by certified mail? No. So again, how do we prove that they got that information? The only way, we recommend that they bring the form in to us and we stamp it. As far as if they get it from the mail, we really don't know. Commissioner Karski? So it, it, this is a case where this one said we thought we did it, or we, we, we're we certain we did it, and we right. don't have it. Right, and then when we we did send him a notice, and he says he didn't get that. Okay, he said, she said. Okay. Hmm. Any further discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to uphold the uh, equalization decision to deny. Is there a second? Is there interest in deferring this one as well? We can. I guess I'm concerned about the practice of not, um, if the individual is telling us exactly what happened, they didn't receive the first one certified mail, so we can't prove that they did or didn't. And you send another notice, and there's no way you can prove that they got that one either. Um, right. So we have, yeah, Commissioner Karski. So if I'm understanding this case as compared to the last one, the last one it wasn't a matter of um, I didn't do it because I didn't know. This one's a matter of, I swear I did it, and there's just no record of it. Right. Okay. I'm gonna recommend, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make a motion that we um, approve the uh, abatement on this one. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second to approve the abatement. Any further discussion? We'll do a roll call vote again. Barr? Why am I always first? No. Bender? Yes. Benega? Yes. Karski? Yes. Motion passes. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, that takes us to item seven. Uh, notices and requests. Uh, the first item is to authorize the auditor to publish notice of hearing on April 3rd for the transfer of a retail on off sale wine license application submitted by Wildwater West. Olivia. Yes, um, as you guys may recall, Wildwater West approved, got a new area approved um, to their business so now they just need to transfer their alcohol beverage licenses so that they can use it for the entire business so this is just a notice of hearing so that we can get that um, taken care of for them in April 
Any questions for Olivia? Make a motion to approve the notice of hearing for April 3rd. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. This takes us to item B. In here, uh, what I need is a motion to amend the bid deadline and the bid open date in the bid documents to April 4th, 2018, and to authorize the auditor to publish a notice to bidders for the replacement of the JDC parking lot. Uh, due to publication deadline lines, we needed to push the uh, deadline to open the documents back to April 4th. Mark Krenz. Good morning, Commission. Mark Krenz, Facilities Director. Uh, the parking lot of the Juvenile Detention Center is in poor condition and in need of replacement. Um, I've entered into agreement with Saren Associates to do the design work and help um, draft the front end documents, which have been reviewed and approved by the state's attorney. Uh, I'm requesting commission approval to uh, authorize the auditor to post notice to bidders for the replacement of the parking lot at the Juvenile Detention Center. Are there any questions? This item was budgeted? Yes. If there aren't any questions, then I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to authorize publication on the parking lot. Second. Do we need to include the new date for yeah, the Yeah, if you could. I think if you could just, that the, so the motion is to um, amend, the, amend the bid deadline to April 4th, um, 2018, and to authorize I think publication. That's what I said, but yes, that's what so I, I thought I heard that. you say, yeah. Second. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, that takes us to the next item, which is also for Mark Krenz, and we have the similar uh, deadline pushed back to April 4th, 2018. Right, Mark. Uh, so, uh, Minneapolis County purchased the key building for the purpose of demolition and construction of a parking lot. Um, as well as JDC, I've entered an agreement with Saren Associates to do the design work and assist in drafting the front end documents, which have also been reviewed and approved by the state's attorney. So, I'm requesting commission authorize the auditor to post notice to bidder for construction of parking lot H. Are there any questions? Any questions for Mark? Move for approval to publish the uh, notice to bidders and opening of the bid award. Second. Okay, so just to clarify that that amendment was to open the bid deadline, bid open date to um, April 4th, 2018, and to publish. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Next item are planning and zoning notices. There are none. Um, item nine, petition for compromise of lien. Carol Muller. Good morning, commissioners. Carol Muller, commission office staff. Before you is an application to compromise lien DPNO-21941 in the amount of $5,226.19 with no payment. And uh, only it applies to the property that is located at 1507 North Wayland Avenue. If approved as requested, this action would leave the lien in place and in full against the individual named on the lien. The lien represents hospital and medical fees and court-appointed attorney, public advocate, and public defender representation fees. A title search report identified the lien as an encumbrance on the property. The applicant today is an equitable owner of the real property, and that person entered into a contract for Dean deed with the lienee on February 15, 2002. The buyer defaulted on the payments on January 2015, abandoned the property, and returned the keys. The termination of contract for deed was executed in January 2018. For your review, you have several documents in front of you from the, uh, from the applicant's attorney. Uh, you have Exhibit A as justification for the request to compromise the lien. Exhibit 1 is the contract for deed that was executed in 2002. Exhibit 3 is the termination of contract for deed from January 2018. And Exhibit 4 is the title search report. I would share that the applicant is here today along with their attorney, Sarah Schroeder. Questions that you may have for anybody. As we know, lien, liens are never the same each week. Any questions for Carol? If not, um, is, would the applicant or the applicant's uh, counsel like to come and provide any comments?
Good morning. My name is Sarah Schrader. I'm an attorney for George Burnt, the petitioner. Um, I would just like to add that all property taxes are current as well, which have been paid by Mr. George Burnt. Um, when the Leany defaulted on the contract for deed, he left the property with $2,500 taxes owing, and my client did pay those, and all taxes are current as well. Are there any questions? Madam Chair. Yes, Commissioner Barth. Did, uh, did Mr. Anderson uh, consult with you when he drew up this contract for deed? He did not. This is back in 2002, so that's before my time. But However, it's not before the law's time. I mean, uh, this is a pretty risky business generally to uh, try uh, to sell a property contract for deed. Um, and certainly, uh, uh, you know, whether there's maintenance, a new roof or a new air conditioner, these kinds of liens uh, would still be with Mr. Anderson, uh, mechanics liens. Uh, and after... 15 years of living there, uh, paying rent of, or rent, pay, making house payments of $15,000 a year. Uh, it, the, this individual had no equity in this house. Is this the story? He paid about $90 a month for, um, for 15, about 15 years until 2015 until he defaulted. Um, at that time, he admitted default and relinquished the keys and said, I give up on this property and handed back the keys and admitted default. Hmm. Chair, if I may. Yes, Commissioner Karski. Okay, so the term of the loan was for $15,000, but it doesn't say for how many years uh, on the contract. I mean, is it, was it a... I will have to confer the contract for deed. Which is $15,000 with interest at the rate of 6% per annum. That is unclear to me at this time. I believe until probably $15,000 paid off that they were willing to hand over title at that point. Okay. But it also says that the uh, party, the second part, is going to pay all the taxes. But you're saying that Mr. Burnt paid the taxes, or was it kind of like a escrow that he had set up to do that? William Anderson was liable for the taxes while he was still living there. But the time he defaulted, property taxes were due. And that's where Mr. Burnt said, I'm going to pay them because someone has to pay them at okay. this point to make them so current. So he did pay the property taxes yep. while he was living there? Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, who is the owner of this property? Uh, the petitioner is the owner at this point. Now who's uh, Melissa and Harry Telberg? Names on the Very taxes. complicated uh, timeline, given the fact that there's a pending quiet title action because of this complicated timeline of um, owners. Harry Melissa Telberg sold the property to the petitioner, Mr. George Burnt. Okay for money. However, no warranty deed was given at that point. Then Mr. George Byrne entered a contract for deed with Mr. Anderson. Um, Mr. Anderson defaulted in 2015 and the property was given back to Mr. George Byrne. After that, somewhere in there, the Telbergs gave the warranty deed back to Mr. Byrne. We have not filed that because of the chain of title is not obviously in the flow of things. So we are started a quiet title action to get good title to Mr. Byrne. Um, once we started the quiet title action, Mr. Anderson approached us and said, I will sign a contract, termination of contract for deed. I defaulted. And he came to our office and signed one willingly. Okay. So Telbergs have no equity in this property. They're just the sellers, and they admit, we have an affidavit from them as well, admitting that they sold the property, they have no ownership in it, they don't know why they didn't give a warranty deed at that time. Hmm. So failure to file the right paperwork, basically. Correct, Your Honor. Correct. It's commission. Okay. Any other questions? I guess I would ask our own state's attorney if she has an opinion on the conversation and the conclusion. Uh, Commissioner, uh, the statute uh, gives you discretion um, to uh, consider th this request. Um, I can read the statute to you if, uh, if that's of any assistance. Um, so your opinion is fine you don't need to read the statute okay well you know it's it, it you know this is a, a policy you know discretionary matter that uh is uh is in your control um the uh, you have the ability um to compromise uh, this lien at the request of the applicant um there is a quiet title action pending that minnehaha county has filed an answer for um i think that um 
you as a commission need to decide um, the equities here. Uh, I think that uh, there's probably been a, some confusion about how much money was paid because of the fact that the contract is, um, is not uh, clear. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no amortization schedule attached, so we really don't know how much uh, equity Mr. Anderson uh, had in the property that's now being forfeited by virtue of the foreclosure on the contract for deed. So effectively, you know, really what you have is a mortgage foreclosure because a, a contract for deed is basically a, a you know, Ms. Uh, uh, Ms. Schrader's client is, uh, is basically a banker. So um, if you choose to, to uh, deny the request, the quiet title action would continue and the county would continue to try to assert uh, an equitable lien uh, uh, against the uh, contract payments that were paid to Mr. Burnt. Um, as an alternative, you, uh, you, I mean, obviously you've uh, seen these situations before where you can compromise it in full. If you do compromise it in full today, uh, I would suggest that you only compromise it as a release to this property and maintain the lien against Mr. Anderson. And so basically you would then allow Mr. Burnt, if that's the commission's decision, uh, to have the lien released from the property because see the contract was recorded and so then that immediately triggered Mr. Anderson's lien attaching to that uh, that recorded filing with the Register of Deeds office. So you, if, if you're inclined to uh, give the applicant relief here, uh, the best thing to do for the county would be to go ahead and release it as to Mr. Burnt. Uh, uh, so you would release the property from the five thousand plus dollars but you would maintain the lien against Mr. Anderson so that you'd have the opportunity to further collect that from him as he was the original uh, uh, individual who requested the funds. I make a comment? Yes, Commissioner Kersky. <clears throat> I can't imagine we'd ever see Wells Fargo mortgage here saying, you know, we had a mortgage on this property and we got it back and our 180 day redemption notice and we'd like the uh, lien forgiven so we can sell the property, they would sell the property and um, pay the lien and um, most likely move on is what I'm assuming would happen anyway. I, I don't see where this is a whole lot of difference other than it's a private party contract for deed. Um, the individual obviously had to have some equity in the home, how much, I, it, uncertain, but um, when this property is again transferred, somebody's going to be making money on on the sale of this property, and the county, the taxpayers are the ones holding the short end of the stick in my mind. Any other comments, Commissioner Barth? Madam Chair, you know we often have people come in who are uh, trying to finance a house, and so uh, the lenders look at them and they say, well, you've got this county lien outstanding. And so we're not going to loan this to you until you get it straightened out with the county. In this case, it, it looks to me like uh, the, uh, the person giving up the property, uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, had a lien uh, that predated his, his mortgage, his, his contract for deed. He had payments uh, in 1987 for uh, a court-appointed attorney. So knowing that this person already had liens against them, uh, uh, the seller agreed to uh, for contract to d for deed on this thing. And so it seems to me that, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to support releasing this lien. Any further comments? I'd entertain a motion. I make a motion to deny this, uh, uh, releasing this lien. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that takes us to opportunity for public comment. Is there anyone here that would like to speak about something that's not on the agenda today? I don't see anybody rushing to the podium, so we'll move on to regular business. Item number, number 10, consider a motion to issue the annual proclamation recognizing March 17, 2018 as St. Patrick's Day for Minnehaha County. 
I have Justin Bentis here. Deb, did you want to come up and read our proclamation? <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> I have, I have been in Peter for about nine <coughs> weeks, so. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Um, sure, I will. Oh, I'm sorry, we need you to introduce yourself. Oh, give your uh, Deborah Owen, uh, Public Policy Director for the Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. And we're excited about our St. Patrick's Day proclamation, and so I'll read it for you. Whereas we be Irish men and women, all this day, all this day of national celebration, at home in Ireland and in homelands, throughout the world and, whereas the joyous unity of St. Patrick's Day reminds us all of your shared heritage and membership in a global family, and whereas today we honor the patron saint of Ireland of his great message of love and peace to one another, and whereas celebrations are in order, oh, I can read it there too, can't I? Sorry. Are in order for an expression of culture and heritage in music, dance, poetry, games, and just a wee bit of green beer raised in a toast. And whereas green silliness abounds as you shed your troubles by the road for a chance of good cheer and a wearing of the green, and then this we proclaim as leprechauns are a dancing and the joy of ivory wear with the luck of your companions from deep in our hearts we treasure our strong community spirit and tradition of welcome and care for one another. And thank you who did that. Thank God for the Irish who give us St. Patrick's to bring us together a wear in a green hat. Then shout and proclaim for the whole world is Irish on the 17th day of March. Dated this day, 13th of the merry month of March 2018. Well, thank you. That's something you don't get to do in Pierre. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome you. back. Um, so, is there a motion? There is. It's a second. Motion and a second. Commissioner Karski. Uh, great, great job of reading that, Miss Owen. I swear Yoda must have wrote that for you. It's kind of <laughs> <laughs> difficult. All right. So, you have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, Item 11, we have another proclamation. We'll have a motion to issue the annual proclamation recognizing March 13th and 14th as Sioux Empire Water Festival Days. Chuck. Chuck Martinell, SDSU Extension, Minneapolis County 4-H. I probably can't follow that one up very well, but. <laughs> uh, whereas the Big Sioux Aquifer underlies approximately 1,000 square miles and together with the Big Sioux River provides water to communities in southeastern South Dakota, Whereas providing 2,166 fourth grade children from 100 classrooms in 41 southeastern South Dakota schools with information about the protection and preservation of water, our most valuable resource, will help children make educated decisions concerning water in the future. Whereas this education is accomplished with the help of 100 plus staff and volunteers from federal, state, county, and city governments and from private businesses. Whereas this is the 25th annual event. Whereas County, convention, uh, County commis Commission recognizes the long-term benefits of this type of education and supports such educational effort, efforts. That was a mouthful. It was. Like I said, I could not follow that one up. <laughs> well, it's a great festival. So any questions for Chuck? Madam Chair? Yes, Commissioner Chuck, Raj. we used to have uh, like uh, teams of children come in and put on skits uh, talking about how we're drinking the same water that uh, dinosaurs drank and that uh, George Washington bathed in. Um, how, how come we don't have like 20 kids in here? Um, that's a great question. I'll pass that on to the committee. Sure. I think they heard you were sick today, Commissioner Barth, and they're scared of your germs. Mm -hmm. All right, now I've lost track. Are there <laughs> any other questions? <laughs> if not, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. So second. So motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank we you. appreciated you even without the children. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, that takes us to item 12, and we are privileged to have a presentation on the Glory House. Dave Johnson. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Dave Johnson. I'm the president of the Glory House, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here to tell you kind of what we're up to lately. Um, are you controlling this? So I don't. I am. Okay. Well. Or you can also volunteer. Yep, that's what I thought. All right. 
<clears throat> Thank you. As you know, Glory House has been in the community for, actually this is our 50th anniversary. We were started out, well, before I get start this, I, I did notice that I said brief in front of my presentation, so I will try to make it as brief as possible and try <laughs> to be informative. Anyway, in 1968, Roger Fredrickson uh, with the First Baptist Church and Jan P. Menholt. Uh, actually, Roger spoke in front of a Bible study group he was leading and made the comment, what we should have here in Sioux Falls is a place for men to return from jail or prisons uh, because they have alcohol problems and they need a place to stay. To hear Roger tell it, he would say, I only threw it out there because I just came off the top of my head and I seriously didn't think anything was ever going to happen. <clears throat> and of course, good things did happen. So uh, Jan Pei called Roger and said, I have your house. And Roger said, what do you mean? And she said, I rented your house. And this was down on Williams Avenue, downtown Sioux Falls. It's a great big pink house that was there. <clears throat> and so Roger said, okay, well, the surest way to kill this thing is I'm gonna get a committee together. <laughs> so he brought a committee to that old house and they walked through it and in the corner was this piano. Now, Jan Pei was a very wicked, good jazz pianist. And she sat down and started playing, but what she started playing was, my eyes have seen the glory, because that was also the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated. Somebody in the back of that committee that said there's only one name for this place and it's called the Glory House. And that's how we got our name and that's how we are, what our roots are. When Roger tells it, of course he is now deceased, it's a much better story. Today we have 84 beds. We have very complex clients as I know the county is well aware of. It's not as simple as it used to be I don't know if it's ever really that simple, but uh, we don't have simply the alcoholic. Now we have all the coing dis disorders as well. And coupled with that, um, uh, you have the criminal justice element as well. <clears throat> we are, however, we're still serving the mothers, the fathers, the daughters, the sons, uh, our own family. Uh, they are our clients. Our community is, this community has roots into who we serve today. We're accredited by the American Correctional Association and accredited by the South Dakota Department of Social Services for substance abuse treatment. 2017, we served just residentially 414 clients and 62% of them completed the program successfully. Add to that another 700 plus of outpatient uh, uh, clients, um, including drug testing, electronic monitoring, SCRAM, we had another 700. We have an annual budget of around 3 million people, or 3 million people, no, mm -hmm. let's go $3 million, with uh, approximately today we have 53 employees. But what we saw moving forward is that what we, we have a gap in services, and that's kind of where our focus has been in the last, well, actually been several years. We partnered, we know that our clients do okay as they come out of treatment facilities and jails and as long as they have the structure. But once they get out in the street, we see them hit the roadblock. It doesn't take long and they're back in getting into uh, things that they shouldn't be getting into. So we saw this as an opportunity to expand our continuum. And so we have partnered with uh, Lloyd's companies and the city and in we have a 10-year window which we are going to make that much shorter than 10 years to build 72 apartments and it's going to be built right next door to glory house on the old ice skating rink building so that's what the project overview was this is more the details we have of that first 24, uh, actually 25 units. Um, we have 2.5 million of the 2.7 million it's gonna cost for that first uh, apartment. Um, as you can see here, the rents are gonna be extremely 
um, affordable. That was a part of the issue with our clients. Um, it could be as low as $307 a month and as high as $504 a month, and that's everything included, except cable. You gotta pay for that. So <coughs> we're working on fundraising. Uh, we're working on beginning a capital campaign. We went in front of the Chamber uh, Appeals Committee. We were approved to do a capital campaign and uh, of a $1.35 million scope. And uh, we just got notification uh, officially last uh, week, but we, were, we knew that in fe February. So one of the things are, we know we need in our community is safe, clean, affordable housing with access to treatment. By building these apartments next door to Glory House, those folks that are in those apartments who have easy access to ongoing mental health, substance abuse, case management, uh, all those sort of services that uh, sometimes provide barriers. We know that about 90% of our current clients have a substance abuse diagnosis, and of those, approximately 65% also have mental health concerns. Addic addiction is a brain disorder, and so time clean really makes a difference. The idea is if we could have them in transition at the, at the original Glory House site and then provide safe, affordable housing ongoing, that will give the brain time to heal. They can make better decisions. And why we thought this is a priority? First of all, we know that affordable housing is difficult in Sioux Falls. You add on top of that people with felon, felony records, it even gets harder. Um, we also see it as an opportunity because most of our clients, both men and women, come to Glory House and they really want to go to work. The majority of our clients want a job. They want a chance to show that they can be productive citizens. In 2017, 83% were employed. In 2017, we provided 338 employees for 145 different employers. That's significant for all of us. The community-based access to substance abuse, mental health, case management services, uh, the cost is cheaper than putting them in jail or prison, and we help create taxpayers rather than tax takers. We also, you know, we think of our facility as just treating men and women, but as we all know, those men and women are connected to their families. Over half our clients have children, and those are also in impacted by what we do and who we try to serve. So this is kind of what happened and um, I would, uh, uh, Bob Liss isn't here but I'm gonna mention Bob's name because he originally on the city council started the push to help Glory House ex uh, get this ice skating rink that was all uh, loaned uh, or land donated by Doc Giebink and his family several years ago, many years ago. And we were able to partnership with the city, an 8-0 vote from the city council for uh, a section of land, uh, half of essentially that, that ice rink property for approximately $50,000. Um, while we were in our uh, uh, appeals uh, presentation, Sheriff Milstead uh, was also spoke and gave powerful testimony regarding the need for addiction type services and long-term housing for our clients. The county is well aware of all the costs it, it, it uh, law enforcement uh, costs the county. We also pulled information from the uh, Sioux Falls Thrive Report uh, we have support from the South Dakota Housing Development Authority for the first building. That's where the 2.5 million of the 2.7 came from, and of course the city support. We did do a feasibility study. I'm not necessarily to go through there, but the big finding is that most people said this is kind of a, something that we know the city needs and is something that the county and the city can uh, see the benefits from. So, housing, all right. 
So this is kind of uh, what our game plan is as of today. Tomorrow it might look a little different, but as of today, um, uh, we plan on building our first building, uh, hopefully breaking ground while the Lloyd says by April. So I'll shoot for June. And then uh, it should be open by uh, October uh, or so. So I'm hoping by November. So um, that is kind of where we're added to. And that's why we asked uh, for the 1.35 million support from the chamber uh, to go do an appeals campaign. Questions? Any questions for Dave? just have a comment if I might um, we appreciate the fact that you've started this project and been tenacious I guess and over the years to make that happen because we understand public safety as well as anybody probably with the fact that it's such a significant part of our uh, budget but more importantly the commitment from the board and the dedication that the board made for you uh, to get that project moving and up and running and all the times you had to revisit this conversation I I really do appreciate your um, dedication to make that happen because it is a significant need as your slides say but more importantly it helps not just the people that are using the facility it's the people and the families and the community that is a better alternative than what sometimes we have to be involved with. So thank, thank you. you. I appreciate that very much. Commissioner Barth. Dave, you and I talked a little bit before the meeting, and <clears throat> I've got to say all of us are greatly appreciative of non-governmental organizations uh, picking up some of the load because if we had to have uh, a county department that uh, did what you guys do, it would cost more millions than your projects cost. And uh, certainly we do give uh, uh, property tax exemptions to nonprofits and stuff, but uh, this is a perfect example of what we need nonprofits to do in our community, and thank you for doing it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming. Uh, everybody I've ever talked to speaks very highly of the program, the outcomes that you guys have, and, and the lives that you really impact every day. So we appreciate you and, and all your staff that work hard every day. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a presentation from the Highway Administration, DJ Boothie. Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothie, Highway Superintendent. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to give a 2018 uh, program and services presentation an update of what the highway department is up up to I have a real similar outline to the uh, previous departments that have uh, given this type of presentation uh, last month and earlier this month uh, just starting off with 2017 uh, projects that we've completed uh, we in 2017 we we did a pavement analysis uh, this pavement analysis was a follow-up to the same type of analysis that we did in 2014. So just kind of a, uh, another look at the condition of our pavements. Uh, they use a, a bunch of instruments connected to a van that they drive every single mile on our, our road network. And they measure the distresses in our asphalt pavement and concrete pavement. And uh, if you guys were fortunate enough, I know a couple of you were, uh, to attend the uh, MPO meetings last week, uh, you saw one presentation about the condition of our payment system and uh, and IMS will be doing another similar presentation uh, to the County Commission once their final report is completed uh, within the next month or so more than likely uh, the good news is that our payment uh, we've been doing a lot of preservation and so our payment is in really good shape and uh, we look forward to continuing uh, maintaining that uh, condition with our asphalt in the future uh, the next thing that we completed in 2017 was our bi biannual bridge inspections. Every year we do about half of the uh, bridges on our network. We've got 197 bridges right now, and we inspect about half of them. Uh, in 2017, we didn't find any really big shocking items that required immediate attention or replacing of, replacement of structures or anything like that. 
uh, more so just more preservation work, more maintenance work, and continuing with our regular replacements. We try to replace two to three bridges every single year uh, just to be on a sustainable schedule. Uh, in 2017, we completed the second phase of our Highway 149 reconstruction project. Uh, that was the first large replacement or large reconstruction project that we uh, did as a de department in over a decade. And so that was a really large project for us. And, uh, and we're hoping that that payment lasts over 40 years. Uh, and so uh, we also started and completed the design for Highway 137, which was the it will be the second project, reconstruction project, that we complete. Uh, we just opened bids for that, uh, I think, one week ago. Uh, it says here, township bridge replacements. We actually did two highway uh, bridge replacements and one township bridge replacement, so we replaced three bridges in 2017, and then a number of different maintenance projects. So 2017 was a, a really big year for us. Uh, these are just a few quick summaries of, of big things that we worked on. Uh, but I'll show you here what we're going to be working on in 2018. Uh, number one item there, 2017 budget analysis. And so in 2015, the state legislature uh, passed a transportation funding bill uh, that had a really large impact on counties. and. Uh, uh, the state pooled motor vehicle registration fees was one item that was a big topic of, of uh, conversation during the, the passage of that bill. And uh, it was a bit of an unknown as it was presented to counties. It was a great program. Uh, come to find out from any Haha -Ha County, it's not a great program. Uh, we have a, a very significant loss in revenue that we've seen since uh, the passage of that bill. And so uh, as we have been reviewing our 2017 revenues, uh, we've seen a very substantial decrease in revenue, uh, well over a million dollars a year. And so when we look at a five-year plan, uh, that, that large amount of dollars, they really add up and it's going to have a pretty significant impact to our five-year plan. So uh, we just began reviewing the impact to our, our overall budget and our five-year plan, uh, but we hope to present more on that uh, to the commission during the budget process. Uh, also in 2018, uh, MDSS is something we're going to be implementing. That stands for Maintenance Decision Support System. Uh, that's a system that gets uh, installed into our uh, snowplow trucks on our computers, and it's also accessible on our cell phones. Uh, that allows us to uh, readily make decisions, uh, smart decisions on snow removal, snow fighting, ice fighting, and uh, it it collects data out in the field, takes pictures out in the field uh, from our snowplow trucks, and delivers uh, radar weather information to our drivers. And it also brings all the data that's collected out in the field uh, into the computers, and it's meshed with uh, weather data and allows us to make smart decisions on how to treat our roads during uh, snow removal projects, or snow removal and ice removal. Uh, we're also working on County Highway 146. Uh, as our, our next reconstruction project following County Highway 137. Uh, we're working on the design right now. There's also a large amount of utility relocations and right-of-way needs out on that corridor. So that's something we'll be working on throughout the entire year. Uh, following up the 137 design that we completed in 2017, uh, we'll be completing the reconstruction portion of the 137 corridor. And then also continuing to work on uh, future needs for a, a highway department facility is something that we are making a, a big priority for in 2018. Uh, just some overall big picture goals and, and things that we're working on for the department. Uh, safety driven project selection. Uh, that's something that's really important to us. Uh, we're not a worst first department. We don't make um, project selections based off of entirely conditioned data. Uh, we don't look at the worst road in the county and say that that needs to be replaced first. Uh, similar to uh, bridges, we don't look at the worst bridge in the county and say that that needs to be replaced. Uh, safety is a big impact on everything that we do. Uh, there's a lot of people that drive our roads. There's a lot of users of our networks. And so uh, uh, safety-driven project selection is something that, uh, that uh, we're making a bigger priority uh, for our department. Uh, County Highway 146, the project that we're looking at right now, it's definitely not the worst pavement condition in the county, uh, but uh, statistically speaking, it is the unsafest corridor in our county. So 
uh, that played a big role into the selection for that project to be reconstructed. Uh, asset sustainability. I've showed the commission uh, the, a typical decline curve of, of an asset. Uh, what happens after you build it with the condition index? It, it starts at 100 and eventually makes its way down to a zero. Uh, we look at uh, when is an appropriate time uh, to do different maintenance activities and preservation activities in order to have your lowest life cycle cost. Uh, we're continuing to, to uh, develop systems in, in house in our uh, department uh, to make sure that we have the lowest cost asset over the course of a life. And then uh, wheel tax research. Uh, we currently have uh, an ordinance in Minnehaha County where we charge $4 uh, for four wheels uh, for wheel tax in 2015. Um, the state law changed and it's uh, up to $5 for 12 wheels. And so uh, many counties have changed their wheel tax uh, over the last two years or three years. Uh, we've elected not to do that, uh, but something that we want to uh, do in 2018 is just investigate um, uh, what the opportunities out are out there. If, if we know more information about how many uh, vehicles are out there in excess of four wheels, uh, then we can provide better information to the commission and, and for budgetary discussions uh, if we want to look at uh, changing the way that the wheel tax is assessed to our vehicles. Uh, uh, it would be best to do that with the more information that we, what we have today. Uh, there's been discussion out there, I know. Uh, every vehicle is basically treated the same, whether it's a 2,000 pound passenger vehicle or a 20,000 pound semi uh, tractor. And so uh, the impact on our road system is, is vastly different for those two di different types of vehicles, but they're being charged the same amount of wheel tax. And so do we want to look at uh, balancing out the the income or the revenue that is received from those vehicles and and based more on uh, the impact of the roadway uh, that's something that uh, we'll have a discussion about hopefully throughout the course of 2018 and then uh, ERP software conversion uh, that's something that will affect every department in the county as you guys know and uh, we run a, a pretty um, in-depth uh, financial uh, piece of software in our uh, department with cost accounting. Uh, we track every single cost that, that goes through our department. And so the ERP software conversion is gonna be a pretty big issue for us. Uh, we have an on-staff accountant in the department, and so she'll be working closely with the auditor's office and IT on, uh, on that conversion. So well, those are just a few of the highlights of what we did last year, uh, what we are planning on doing this year, and I'll entertain any questions that the commission has. Any questions for DJ, Commissioner Barth? Uh, DJ, so when you talk about uh, losing some revenue uh, based on some changes, is, is that the uh, bogus bridge deal that the state uh, set up to transfer bridge money from Minnehaha to other counties? That's a rhetorical question. So is that the, is that the money that they took for the bridge uh, fund from all counties and then try to distribute it back? That's why I we are suffering a shortfall? That, that's exactly right. So the, uh, the amount of, of motor vehicle fees collected increased by 20%, uh, but the amount of money retained by the state uh, to fund programs such as the Bridge Improvement Grant uh, dramatically increased uh, to the point where the distribution out to counties from that motor vehicle fund is significantly reduced. And so the money that we get back from the motor vehicle fee uh, fund has dropped pretty significantly. Well, as you know, I feel we got ripped off on that deal. But I have another point I want to make, which is I happen to have an opportunity to visit one of your, with one of your staff without you being present the other day. And he told me seriously that the stainless steel equipment is better. I'm glad that he said that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other, Commissioner Karski? A couple things. Um, I get the opportunity to meet with DJ regularly, and I don't do a great job of um, maybe describing back to the commission and the county the great work that he's doing, um, a very well-managed approach and programs and systems and processes to make sure our bridges and um, roads are um, adequately maintained. It's easier to maintain something than it is to have to go out and rebuild it. I uh, had breakfast with Mark Cotter from the city this morning, the public works director, and he, he made a comment about 
the great condition of the county roads. Uh, he says he drives to Colton frequently, and he's very happy with the, from a professional observation, I guess, on the condition of our roads. So just to, you know, recognize you for the work that you've done with um, having programs to make sure that we do it systematically, that we're not putting out fires at different places is just a, a great way to manage a Thank you. Uh, department. I always find it interesting, and this is just my own personal comment, that we consider roads an asset, but we got to pay for them. So to me, it, like one person described me one time, my, ho my home isn't an asset, it's a liability. It keeps costing me money. So um, I guess it's all in the philosophy that, that you use to take a look at that stuff. Um, regarding the wheel tax, any money that's generated by the wheel tax stays specifically in Minnehaha County, right? That's, that's correct that's for all the wheel tax, money. which is okay. contrary to the registration fee. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that takes us to item 14, authorize the Sheriff's Department to submit an application for the 2017 State Criminal Alien Assistance Program grant funds. Joe Bosman. Good morning, Commissioners. Joe Bosman with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, what I have for you this morning is a request to apply for, uh, it's an annual program that we've applied for called the State Criminal Alien Assistance Program. We call it SCAP. A lot easier, shorter to say. But what it is is the federal government allows um, us to receive funds from them if we provide documentation showing that we have housed um, individuals that um, are, uh, we're detaining individuals who we believe to be criminal aliens um, based on they're not documented, they have no form of citizenship with us, um, they have to be housed here on local charges um, for Minnehaha County or state. They're not, they can't be housed on any federal charges or anything. but we can get reimbursed for a portion of our housing costs, our salaries, our fees. Um, those funds have to be used specifically for correctional purposes once we do receive them. Uh, some examples um, could be for equipment and supplies. Most recently, we purchased a, a body scanner that maybe if you heard about in the jail, that has been used with some SCAP funds for that too. So we don't know how much we'll get yet. It's kind of one of the, like a percentage based on how many other states, local entities put in for it. Um, we give them the information and we kind of see once what we can receive. Is there any questions for Joe? Make a motion to approve. <coughs> second. And then a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Takes us to item 15. Consider a motion to authorize the 2018 interfund transfer from the general fund to the emergency management fund. Kim Adamson. Good morning, Commissioners. Kim Adamson from the Auditor's Office, and I'm here today just to request authorization to do a, an interfund transfer from the general fund to the emergency management fund. It's in the amount of $235, $235,686. This is the 2018 budgeted amount. Um, as you're aware, we receive federal grant funds to cover about between 40 and 45 percent of our emergency management budget and this transfer then is necessary to fund the remainder of those budgeted appropriations. Kim? Move for approval. A second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Takes us to item 16. Authorize uh, the chair to sign an agreement between Minnehaha County and interior technicians for contract cleaning of the Minnehaha County buildings. Mark Krinz. Good morning again, Commission. Mark Krinz, Facilities Director. Uh, back in January, the Commission approved the bid award to interior technicians for cleaning, con cleaning contract for county buildings. Um, we have a contract drafted and approved by the state's attorney, so I am requesting Commission approval to authorize the chair to sign the contract with interior technicians for cleaning county buildings. Are there any questions? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, that takes us to item 17. Authorize the chair to sign an agency agreement between NAI Commercial Real Estate for brokerage services to sell the 908 Northwest Avenue building. Craig Dewey. Good morning, Craig Dewey, Commission Office. The agreement before you is an agreement with NAI Commercial 
uh, who applied uh, through an RFP process to provide brokerage services, and this would be to sell the building at 908 Northwest Avenue. Uh, had a number of good uh, brokerage firms apply, and uh, NAI uh, provided the best deal for the county, which is the uh, firm that uh, you all approved uh, in a previous commission meeting uh, to proceed with. So this is the uh, contract before you. I'd be happy to answer any questions and would just add that uh, they are ready to spring from the gate and uh, are really excited about this opportunity to help the county. Like a, I'll make a motion to authorize who's sitting in his chair to sign that contract. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further discussion? Not um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And now we get our legislative update again. Greg, thanks. Good morning, Commission Office. Uh, the legislature has gone into recess uh, to wrap up the legislative session. There is a two-week recess. The budget was passed uh, at the end of uh, last week here, and uh, there's one day that the legislature is returning for veto day here close to the end of March. Uh, just as a, a quick recap, uh, there's good news and shared success on the part of the uh, Commission and Commission Office uh, in Senate Bill 86 to sell surplus property. Uh, that bill was signed by the Governor uh, last week on March 8th. Uh, next bill uh, in regards to uh, House Bill 1126 uh, providing uh, certain required medical examinations for victims of rape or other sexual offenses. Uh, that bill is still uh, awaiting, awaiting the Governor's uh, signature or veto at his desk. Uh, House Bill 1157, uh, that would allow alcohol manufacturers and wholesales, wholesalers to enter into a sponsorship agreement with uh, certain alcohol licensees, i.e. the Sioux Empire Fair could enter into an agreement. That bill was signed by the governor on March 7th and provides possible uh, uh, future revenue opportunities for the fair. Uh, secondly, uh, House Bill 1257 uh, deals with no maintenance highways and uh, designation uh, of those by certain townships. Uh, the bill underwent uh, a hog house and then a further amendment uh, that was promoted by the uh, South Dakota Association of County Commissioners. Uh, so that was viewed as a positive amendment and uh, that is still awaiting the governor's signature or veto. Uh, next up, uh, Senate Bill 58 that dealt with tax increment financing. Uh, that bill was signed by the governor on March 6th. Uh, that bill was part of the legislative platform that the commissioners approved uh, last fall. And then Senate Bill 9899, a deal with uh, 911 emergency surcharges and releasing of information r related to 911 surcharge uh, funds. Uh, Senate Bill 99, which uh, dealt with the uh, releasing of the information uh, to verify that it was indeed accurately reported. That bill was signed by the governor on the 8th of March. Uh, the other bill regarding the emergency uh, surcharge sunset uh, is still awaiting the governor's signature or veto. And then lastly, uh, the bill <coughs> dealing with approving governing bodies to establish a per diem rate for housing and development commissions. That bill uh, was also signed by the governor. And then lastly, uh, Marcy's Law, which you're aware of, has uh, provided uh, extra financial burdens for the county. Uh, an agreement was agreed to by the legislature and the supporters of Marcy's Law uh, at the very end of the session. Uh, I am still working on confirming some details with that, but uh, just so that you know, uh, those changes uh, were approved by the legislature to go on the ballot for an up or down vote by the public in the June primary election. Uh, so as I indicated, over the uh, next couple of weeks, I'll be providing more information to uh, you as far as how that would directly impact uh, Minnehaha County and the state's uh, attorney's office. I'd be happy to answer any other questions if they arise, though. Any questions for Craig? Commissioner Barth. Well, I just was going to point out that we're blessed with the presence of uh, Senator Dr. Uh, Reynold Desipa, and uh, maybe he would uh, care to comment uh, from his uh, second year in, in, in peer. Senator Desipa, welcome. What, what title do you go by, uh, Madam Chair? I mean, you're a, you have a doctor's degree and you're a senator, you're a professor and a doctor. I mean, what do you, what do you say? I, I would defer to... Um, Senator Nesaba for this for this purposes as to what he would like to be referred I think, to. I think Senator Nesaba is is fine and um, and it was a sad basketball game last night uh, <laughs> to uh, to watch that. The August, uh, Augustana women's basketball team had a great season but had a sad ending. It was a sad sad ending last night. So um, it's good to see Craig Dewey up there in the hallways uh, lobbying effectively on behalf of uh, of Minnehaha County. Um, and I really just stepped to the microphone to if there was any questions I could could answer for you. I 
I, I guess my, my overall comment was I do think it was a, a good session. It really helped that, uh, that we had a little more revenue. I spend most of my time in peer on the Appropriations Committee, so to have a little more money for fiscal year 2018 and 2019, you all know the pain of, uh, of, of uh, budget setting all, all too well. It was great that we were finally able to uh, pass along um, some long overdue cost of living adjustments for state employees, for uh, community support providers, for the, uh, for the education uh, formula, so I'm glad we were able to uh, to address those. So those are important priorities uh, for me. But I'd stand by for any questions that any of you might have about the legislature as well. Commissioner Barth. Uh, Senator, you know, uh, near and dear to me, of course, is uh, uh, raising taxes on alcohol in the effort to cause them to uh, pay the costs in our community. And it did make some progress. The one bill passed the House, got hog housed, uh, et cetera. What is your sense of where that issue is? Is there a chance in future years that um, additional progress could be made? Yeah, I thought the testimony on that, and I was I was uh, happy to uh, to serve as the Senate sponsor on the on the nickel. Uh, it was pitched as a nickel of glass, although my my friends who uh, run micro breweries nearby this building uh, were quick to point out that it was a nickel at the wholesale level and that translates to far more than a nickel at the uh, at the retail level uh, I think it is worth coming back and uh, and taking another uh, another look at that I thought the testimony was compelling it also came up and questions were raised during uh, legis the last legislative coffee over at the Holiday Inn uh, and there was much conversation about that um, it seemed like we spent a lot of time on on alcohol bills uh, this session so maybe there was just overwhelming numbers of those trying to figure out if you could have self-distribution and how much they could produce and keep their other licenses and uh, and that maybe it got lost in that so I do hope that you uh, yeah bring or, or folks bring uh, a bill something like that back um, and really direct it toward uh, toward the counties because uh, you're the ones that uh, that bear that bear that cost uh, so often whether it's doing the prosecution providing a public defender or locking them up here in our county jails. So I understand that. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you thanks. for your support on that. Yep. Any other questions? I'm going to jump on this bandwagon every opportunity I get since you brought <laughs> it up. You know, y you talk about it's us that bear the cost, and truly it's it's the taxpayers, the property taxpayers of Minneapolis County and other counties, everybody across the state. You know, an alcohol tax is not paid by the alcohol industry. It's still paid by the, the consumer. Um, unfortunately, as Commissioner Barth has said, you know, we get to take care of the problems of the naughty and the needy. And most of these problems can be, a good number of them can be tr traced right back to alcohol. And it's the property taxpayers that continue to bear the burden for taking care of this. And it, a tax on alcohol makes sense on so many levels that I just want to jump on the bandwagon and keep singing this song because I think it's important that um, people hear it and realize it. Right. Well, I hope maybe we can have a conversation or a, a cup of coffee and see if we can't put something together. Uh, we changed the rules, and I presume that the, the governor will sign into law uh, the ability for legislators to do uh, to basically pre-file uh, 10 pieces of legislation before the session even starts, and this might be a, a good one to get out there or to get some other people on the conversation so we can have it dropped in the hopper right at the, uh, right at the beginning. Uh, and again, I'm not a, 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 none of us are big fans of taxes, but this is about a principle of taxation that those who are, who are causing the problem in this case should be the ones that are, uh, that are, that are paying for it. And, and when markets create negative externalities, the way we economists talk about it, it makes sense to, uh, to, to tax that and try and correct it and, and have uh, alcohol pay for those problems that it causes in our society. So uh, yeah, I hope we can have a conversation about that. So thank you. Anything else? Okay. Well, as, as you appreciated extra revenue, we obviously appreciate extra revenue. I mean, <laughs> we, um, but I do want to thank you yeah. and everyone who served up in Pierre. That's a, um, a lot of work that you guys do in a short period of time and at a lot of sacrifice to family and careers. And, and we really do appreciate the hard work that you guys do out there. So. And, uh, 
it's hard work and it's sincerely uh, sincerely an honor as well so I'm, I'm the reason I was in the building this morning wasn't I wasn't intending to come to the County Commission uh, meeting I was coming to have my uh, to have my petitions uh, notarized downstairs and then I realized it was Tuesday morning and I should stop up and see what good work the Minnehaha County Commission is doing so thank you for letting me to poke my head in and watch what you were doing and to say a few words so thank you thank you if I could add one more deal, just circling back to uh, Senate Bill 86, uh, both Commissioner Heiberger and Commissioner Karski uh, engaged in a lot of efforts, uh, including Commissioner Karski traveling up to Pier a couple different times, and I think it's really important to acknowledge his effectiveness in uh, testifying before the committee, and I just want to thank you and uh, Commissioner Heiberger again, and all of you for speaking with different lawmakers uh, while uh, they were here in Sioux Falls or whenever uh, you happen to see them. All right, thank you. Okay, that takes us to item 19, liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports this morning? Commissioner Karski? Um, yesterday, DJ and I met in Carol's office with uh, Maggie and Donna Kelly from the State's Attorney's Office, starting a rather large project, as most of you are aware, a lot of our bid the bidding process for highway department kind of goes September through February. So we're trying to get this done before then. And what we're doing is basically a comprehensive rewrite of all the um, contracts the, that the highway department uses so that it frees up their time and eventually the state's attorney's time and having to review all these things, each one individually, for us to have a standard template, I guess, would be a um, best way to describe it. You know, all the different contracts, agreements, uh, general conditions and the numerous forms that the highway department use. Highway department obviously um, does a lot of contracts that the state's attorney's office has to look at. So we're hoping that by standardizing it and rewriting it, a lot of these haven't been done in quite some time that we're able to, um, it, it'll take four to six months, but it, it should free up a lot of, <coughs> a lot of time going down the, in the future. All right, thank you. Commissioner Barth. There are like three things I want to talk about. Fine. But First, I'm going to mention that a couple of weeks back, the museum got a grant uh, for shelving, and I think I sent an email out, but I, I w never mentioned it in, the, in a meeting. Bill, uh, Mr. Hoskins, could you come up and just mention uh, who the grant was from and the amount? Um, Bill Hoskins, director of the Siouxland Heritage Museums. Yep, uh, I, I was informed uh, via email of receiving a grant for it's just less than fifteen thousand dollars for shelving from the daughter Mary Chilton D A R Foundation, um, and that's a reimbursable grant. Um, we will spend the money for shelving, and then we turn turn the receipts in and get paid back by the D A R Foundation. That's good news for our project. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, well, every little bit helps, and, and that's that's part of it. Do you, as, as long as right here, I know this is commission. Do you want a quick update on where that project is? Or, sure. Or um, um, it's going very well. Um, <clears throat> the the structure, uh, a lot of the work inside is going on. Most of the electrical plumbing. Uh, is done. They're doing fire sprinkler work inside the building. Uh, a lot of the sheet rocks happening inside the building. Uh, all the brick is on site, as is all the steel siding for the storage area part of the structure. They have started installing uh, some of that siding on the east face and, and the upper level of the west. Uh, they're really waiting just for the weather to get a little bit warmer through through the course of the day to do the brickwork. Uh, that brickwork is probably the, the critical timeline factor. They can't order windows and the front entrance doors until they have those precise masonry openings. And uh, so w when the masonry gets done, that will move the project ahead. Right now, in their timeline, as things are going, they're about four weeks ahead of schedule. Uh, I think we're doing real well on a budget. We've had a, we've had a small number of change orders totaling thirteen thousand uh, dollars. So I think we're doing very well controlling the budget as well. 
You're full of good news. Thanks for coming. Any yeah. questions for Bill? Madam Chair, uh, no reason to run, Bill. I just uh, <laughs> uh, want to comment on another item, which is that uh, Craig Dewey and, Dewey and I uh, went and visited uh, Teope Cemetery, which is one of our abandoned cemetery locations, which the uh, abandoned cemeteries board had expressed uh, dismay over their access to the uh, property and to the uh, maintenance of the property. Um, the farmer there uh, farms a couple acres of land that belong uh, are related to the cemetery. Uh, in exchange, uh, he's to maintain the cemetery, but it's just not been up to uh, the standard that uh, the, the cemetery people want. And so Craig and I met with them, and we hope to uh, have s settled a situation there. And I just, uh, Bill, do you have any other thoughts, or Craig, any other thoughts on the cemetery? Well, Craig, Craig and I had a discussion yesterday about it, and... Uh, um, yeah. The, the county has this abandoned cemeteries board, and, and I, I, um, I've been sort of on the sidelines for that for, for many years, uh, observing, but uh, it, it's a great group of people. There hasn't been a lot of turnover in that board over the years, and um, th they're really the experts. Uh, I think it was set up uh, at a time when I know Carol Tweet was very involved in it, uh, at, in setting it up. And, it, and it, it came about because of a cemetery, Forest Home Cemetery, that's now surrounded by the city of Sioux Falls. As that area developed, the developer wasn't really aware that there was a cemetery there, and it wasn't maintained until they ran into it. And uh, that that brought about about state legislation and this cemetery board for the county. The cemetery we went up to actually has a Civil War veteran uh, buried in it. Looks like Craig, Craig probably knows. Uh, the only other details I guess I would add uh, in regards to the conversations. I think the uh, uh, idea that Commissioner Barth had as far as the conversation is a win-win uh, for both parties, and we hope to uh, see that uh, to its conclusion. Wonderful. Any other liaison reports? Commissioner Barth. Well, no, go ahead. General will do it because I actually was going to ask uh, Kim to, to talk about this uh, annual report uh, for Minnehaha County as uh, the year ending here. We've got some numbers. Okay, uh, go ahead. I'd like to understand them better. Kim Adamson from the Auditor's Office. Um, this, the report before you is the uh, published annual report for the year that ended December 31st, 2017. Uh, I guess a couple items of note. Uh, if you re review the uh, debt redemption fund, you can see towards the bottom of that report that the debt redemption fund decreased by 7.6 million, almost 7.7 .7 million dollars. And that was because of the payment um, of a, a, a bond payment that was uh, actually held in escrow, was related to a 2014 refunding that at the time of the refunding, the, bond, the underlying bond issues were not callable. So there was about $8 million placed in escrow, and those funds then were used to make the final payment in 2017 to retire that debt. At the time it became callable. Uh, in the building fund um, there were some significant uh, capital outlay expenditures for the year associated uh, with the museum archive facility. That's the 1.8 million dollars that you see there in capital outlay. And in the capital projects fund of course there was uh, a 43 million dollar uh, bond issue that that included a premium amount of $2.7 million, and of that, we had capital outlay expenditures of $1.3 million. So how much did we have left at the end of the year? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the, at the end of the day, our ending fund balances across all funds increased to $70.9 million. Of that $70 million, we have $63 million in outstanding debt payments.
Any other questions? I wait every couple of months before I check my balance at the bank because <laughs> that's the only way I can be sure how much I've got in there. <coughs> All right, thank you. Thanks for coming. Commissioner Benega. Yeah, just one quick comment. Um, over the last couple of months, actually, we've been uh, having very preliminary conversations with the uh, Fair Board about the management contract that they have that expires the middle of April. And that generally is a five-year contract. There's some conversations going on to extend that, but obviously that'll all be uh, processed through this, org this board and the uh, state's attorney's review before it gets to be a finalized draft. But uh, there's some changes that they've recommended that uh, seem reasonable and uh, always back and forth until we get it done hopefully within the next couple of weeks because we don't have a lot of time left before it expires. Okay, anything else? All right, that takes us to item 20, new business. Is there any new business? Any old business? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of SDCL 125, 2, 1, and 3. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone, for coming this morning.